Hello, welcome to the Alone Show. I'm your host, John Alone, and this episode, no regulars, because reasons, as always. As for our guest, he's from United Stairs. He's currently in Utah. He was once a handyman until he left for dead in Mexico. In we wrote a book. Interesting. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Dustin Jackson. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on today. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. So, how's life? It's it's different now. You know, um, after this nice little vacation that supposedly me and my wife were supposed to enjoy life, I end up in a ditch and I've lost the use of my left arm and my leg and other things are kind of a little jacked up. So I'm just, honestly, it's, it's, my life has taken a little bit of a turn, but honestly, there's been some positive that has came out of it too. Nice. Nice. Is there anything you're currently working on or up to recently? Yeah. So, um, we just, I just finished the book. The book literally published less than a month and a half ago. Um, it's called surviving life mugged in Mexico. And it, it talks about, it's actually a full memoir of, uh, how my life led up to me getting mugged in Mexico and kind of more or less the project, what it was about is the decisions that we make in life. And, you know, you think about those critical decisions that you have and you choose one way or the other, and you wonder what would have happened if you would have made a different decision than you did. And, and we don't realize that some of these decisions sometimes are subconscious that we make every single day with ourselves. And, uh, so it talks about our decisions and, and, and kind of what we go over and, and how we get to where we're at in our lives. And, and this one has kind of a nice little fun tale to it because obviously uh, kind of a crazy story getting mugged in Mexico. I kind of just give you a little cliff notes of what happened to me. I took a taxi cab to go to a gas station. Um, the guy could tell I was intoxicated. He kind of, I think he set me up. I'm just going to say that because the cab driver where he took me is where I got mugged. And uh, they charged my credit card. They left me naked in the desert, uh, broken and cut up. So honestly, I I think what it was is I was I was out of it and I was by myself. And so I was a target and they uh, took advantage of me. But that's where I talk about those decisions. You know, where what are those decisions that lead up to this? And, And, you know, the crazy part is this wasn't the first time that one of my decisions in my life had cost me a lot. There's more in the book. And that's that's how we ended up coming to this project. Ah, all right then. Are there any jobs or opportunities you haven't done yet that you would like to do someday? Yeah, honestly, um, lately we've been, just because of the way this has turned out, we've actually been able to do uh, speaking engagements. And I've, uh, I've been able to get out and share the story. And that's kind of what I've been able to do. Unfortunately, I can't be a handyman anymore, being that my left arm doesn't work. Um, so hanging pictures even is a difficult task for me at this point in time or carrying tools, but, uh, uh, it's been a blessing with the book and, and being able to do things. Cause yeah, it's been able to put me in front of the right people and, and share my message that hopefully the younger generation and they make better decisions in their life and they can kind of see and learn from us older people that have, have gone down the path that they shouldn't. And, uh, as we did from our parents and our grandparents from before us. So yeah, it's been just getting out there and sharing the message. That's kind of the new project right now. And then, and getting in front of people and, and sharing the, the story and building this community because there's so much more that goes into this. And I mean, we could dive into it. I, uh, I was an alcoholic for many, many years. And I talk about that in the book and I, I talk about how that affected my decisions. And, and when you, When you come from being somebody like that, that's been addicted to something or created this habit inside your life for so many years, I mean, ask any smoker, any drinker, any person that has committed to any kind of habit for 20 plus years, and it's a negative one, and you have to break it, it really can affect your life. It's it's almost like starting over. And, And when you've taken the way you feel out of the situation and you've changed that, you've, you, like I said, you're, you're you're finding yourself all over again. And so we've actually developed a program to talk about those kind of things too, for people that are starting over because it is hard. And especially with life right now, man, you don't even have to start negative for life to kick you in the butt. I mean, it's been a difficult situation for a lot of Americans out there lately. And so I don't know how it is over there on your guys's side. Um, 
if the economy is great or not. But uh, there's obviously there's difficulties everywhere. I know that's the truth. But yeah, um, it's just moving forward, sharing this, bringing this community together and, and helping people kind of start their life over because we get how hard it is. Yes, absolutely. What could you give a 40 minute presentation on without any preparation? That decisions in life. <clears throat> What are your critical decisions in life? If I were to take you back to that moment that you went left or right on the fork in the road, and, uh, and we, we looked at maybe the other way that you could have gone or made a different choice in your life, where would you be right now? Or was the choice that you made the one that you needed that, that kind of gave you the disadvantage that you needed to grow to become that person? Troubles, going through hard times is not always the bad situation, not always the bad decision. Because when we actually struggle, we actually become better. And, and for some people, we need that. I'm going to tell you all the hard times that I've been through have made me the man that I am today. And so I, I honestly believe in the decisions that you make. And I don't always believe the wrong ones are the bad ones. I believe they all make you who you are. And you had to go through them to become the best person that you are. And that's what we're all trying to do. Yes. Couldn't agree more. If you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? Oh, on a beach. You know, honestly, as long as if I can get away from as many natural disasters as possible and a beach that has decent temperatures year round. And I don't know if that's Thailand area. I don't know if it's Fiji. I don't know if it's Hawaii. I don't know if it's Florida. But uh, when I start thinking Bora Bora. I mean, I, I don't know how the natural disasters are out there, but you give me God's creation, the beautiful things that we have out there, and pen and a paper so I can keep writing and doing the things that I'm doing. I honestly, that's what life is about. And the people, I mean, you want to have the people close to you, but so give me all my people next to me, but give me a nice, beautiful beach that you can wake up and, and that, that would be my, that might be my dream. Yeah, I'd say the same. You live in the yeah. <laughs> what were you gonna say? So do you live in that dream yet? <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't particularly live in such place yet. However, I would love to. Although my parents would argue, oh, but the humidity. I'll, I'll screw with the humidity. I've dealt. I've dealt worse in my life. So, how bad could it be? Yeah, you get used to it, right? Like I lived in. Yeah. Bullhead for a little bit and this is a little bit south of utah um but it they call it the devil's armpit because honestly it gets in the summer about 134 degrees and there's certain times that i'm not kidding you can walk on the tar <clears throat> and uh your shoes will melt to the asphalt because it's so hot there and uh that dude, I did that. I ran as a firefighter down there for four years, which means you go from 134 into 1600 degrees. You get used to it. Doesn't matter what you do, you can get used to it. So I think, I think you just give yourself a little bit of time. We'll both enjoy it. Absolutely. If your life was a meal, what kind of meal would that be? Oh man, uh, my life would be a buffet. Honestly, if it if it was going to be anything, I have had every interaction. I've gone from working in the fire department, being a government employee to traveling the nation as a salesman from end to end, coast to coast in the United States to now writing this book and, and speaking in front of people to owning my own businesses as a handyman and contractor to, I don't know, traveling all around the world so far. I mean, I've been at least on the Western hemisphere. I'm looking to get over on the Eastern here in the next decade, but yeah, it would probably be a buffet because you got a little bit of everything in there. I've, I've had multiple careers and multiple lives, I feel like. Yes, indeed. Have you ever met anyone famous? Yeah, I mean, minorly famous. I mean, I, I, I ran into other people like here in Utah. We have Carl Malone back in the day, Sean Bradley. Um, ran into a couple of them on golf courses, jazz players and stuff like that. Um I had a buddy that went up, became a professional snowboarder when I was younger, um, Stephen Bell. Uh, he still rides little competitions here and there, but back in our twenties, he was a uh, he he traveled all around the world for Forum and a bunch of other companies. So, yeah, no, he uh, 
I mean, I don't know how big famous, how famous are you talking? Nobody like Matthew McConaughey or anything like that, but. Fair enough, fair enough. Where I'm from, the city that I'm in is like the home base for most of the nation, of my nation, of my country's media. So I, I'm used to seeing a lot of well-known names and faces in public, mo- mainly close to Media City UK, because that's literally where the studios are. Okay, yeah. So what what part are you in then? What exact part? I don't. I mean, I don't know the UK too well, but what part are you in? So I'm so I'm currently and right now living in Manchester, but in the south of the Greater Manchester area. Uh, South uh, Media City UK is in the South for Metropolitan Borough, which is like slightly further up north, but not too far up north in the metropolitan area. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to check that on a map. But yeah, okay. So you're pretty populated then. Your area is pretty dense. Yes, it's uh, there's loads of people, but of course there's, there's a mixture of well spread out areas that are kind of rural, but I'm not talking farmland rural, but at least there are houses, houses and businesses nearby okay i actually uh i i, I was looking at my, my genealogy updated the other day and i uh i'm like 47 percent english or something over there in the welsh area now it's kind of know. um you know how you do those me 23 kind of things or whatever they are where they tell you where you're yeah. from yeah I, originally i was like finnish or something and then i was german and irish and now i'm like 47 percent welsh it's crazy yeah that's wild yeah. <laughs> if you were hosting a dinner party and you can invite five guests who are either dead or alive, who would you invite? Oh man. That's a good one. I'd want to get somebody from the past for sure. Um like a George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, okay? And then I'd want one I'm I'm kind of a history buff, so I I don't know. I might want to go five completely old guys just different generations. And say, you know what? Just to be able to talk to them about what their generation was like and how things were and how it transpired so many times, because this is the craziest part. We talk about how history repeats itself all the time. And we don't realize how many things that we go through. Um, me being a person of alcohol that loved to drink and do all these things, you don't you guys don't realize, but we for we have forgotten about prohibition that happened 80 years ago. And prohibition was the entire United States was just a drunkard. And because they were like that, they actually had to outlaw alcohol because they'd send police vehicles down and they'd just pick people up off their doorsteps because they were drunk. We're having the same issues that come into play here in the future as far as, you know, people using and abusing certain kind of instances. But it's so funny that when our economy goes into a bad term. Anyways, the whole point was that is history repeats itself. So the five people that I would probably have I don't know. I could go back as far as I wouldn't mind talking to Genghis Khan, seeing his all of his explorations and then give me somebody like George Washington or Abraham Lincoln. I want to talk to them about what it was like in their day and age. And then, uh, I mean, maybe maybe one guy nowadays just to just to just to see what their life would be like if, if it was a certain kind of person. But uh yeah, I, I don't know. I'm trying to go. So Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, let's go. Genghis Khan, let's go. Oh, what was the book I read the other day that would have been fun? Shoot, man, that's a hard question, dude. There's probably a million people I'd want to see. So, <laughs> so I can't come up with two more right now. I'm sorry. Fair enough. I, I would also have many people I wouldn't invite, but of course, there's just not enough room for everyone. There's not, and but most likely past. I would go past people because it would just be, you want to know. You want to know those things. I would love to know, like, when these guys conquered. I don't know, maybe Noah. I'd want to talk to Noah. Dude, that dude lived 800 and some odd years, or 950 years. At least that's what the Bible says. So his kid, the funny part is, is two generations later from Noah's kid, they only lived like 130 years. Like, I was reading the Bible again the other day on the stories and stuff like that. And it talks about genealogy really a lot but anyways it goes yeah he lived 950 years so maybe him i'd love to talk to him or moses yeah there we go moses noah lincoln genghis khan and maybe jesus 
I'd take Jesus. That'd be a good one to talk to. There's my oh, five. Yeah. That's my five. Right there. That's good. That's a pretty good lineup. So you, 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 you'd know a lot, right? From those guys, I think. Oh, yeah, absolutely. What is the one thing you can't live without? Freak, right now, coffee. But my kids. <laughs> Realistically, my kids, man. I, they are my heart and soul. I mean, it's the only reason you get up anymore. And as I get older, I realize that more and more and more, you know, what life is about, especially with he- how hectic our lives are. It's so crazy, all these things that go on and all these things that people do, and they're all caught up in their phones or their TVs or their jobs. And because our economy is so bad, people are working three jobs and then coming home and crashing out. And it's just, it's insane. It's insane what people go through. So family time is lost. And I think it is the most important thing because you get that feeling inside. You get that burning sensation when you spend time with the people that are close to you. They even say it's like a, you have like an oxytocin release inside of your body when you're, when you are, you know, and we relate it to love and these emotions that we get for people. And so, man, that's just so important and it's so key. And if you're not living in the moment and you're paying attention to those things, you're missing it. And that's a whole part of your body and and a feeling that you're missing that is crucial to your development, I feel like. Yes, absolutely. If you could get rid of a holiday, which one would you get rid of? All of them. Every single one of them, dude. Are you kidding me? They're all just made up. And it just causes me every freaking time I turn around, I got to spend money for this and then Easter and then valentine's and then if i'm my anniversary and then this and then this and then this and then and, uh, dude it doesn't stop and then there's three birthdays a month and dude i spend more money on freaking holidays than i probably do on rent and it's ridiculous it's absolutely ridiculous I, and they're all made up like none of them are real like nobody ever came up and said oh these are mandatory in your life and you have to deal with all of this stuff no you all just made up a bunch of shit because you were bored and now i'm stuck paying for 50 million freaking things yeah that's that that's just boggles my mind. I don't know how could anyone defend that. I don't know, man. I, I I honestly I get rid of all of them. My kids get two holidays a year. They get their birthday, and they get Christmas. I I I, I like them having Christmas just because it's fun. It's cold outside. It's a tradition that we you used to be happy honestly because we gave we used to give i don't know if it's the same anymore but i've actually talked to my kids about doing this or forfeiting christmas one time and just going and giving all their presents away but there used to be a societal norm to christmas was a giving time so i'll keep that one as long as we can keep the morals and values that came with it prior and then then you get your birthday yes absolutely i think with a lot of holidays i think the issue is Different companies and organizations are trying to commercialize these holidays so they can make money out of people to buy stuff in relation to those holidays. Exactly. And with inflation so high, I mean, dude, I went and bought Easter basket stuff this last year just a minute. And they're 100 bucks. 100 bucks for paper and eggs and twirly doos and chocolate candy bars and other little furly things just to stick in. $100. Didn't need to be spent. Are you kidding me? You know $100 oh can nowadays? Yeah, all because my kids need to experience Easter like the rest of the kids do inside of the neighborhood, so they're not the only ones that are missing out. That's just crazy. Oh, I get rid wow. of that. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. That's just wild. So, if someone wrote a book about you, what do you think its title would be? Drunk ass idiot. <laughs> all right then. <laughs> uh, go read my book and you'll understand. Good point, good point. (laughs) How did you spend your last birthday? I hate birthdays. I don't celebrate them. For me, my kids, I don't celebrate my kids. I don't celebrate mine. Um, I like part of those holiday things. Like if it came down to me and what people had to do for me, I'd tell them not to. My family, my kids know that. Like, Dad, what do you want? I don't want anything. Give me a hug. Give me a kiss. Tell me you love me. Let's go hang out. But they know that. Okay. I don't, I don't celebrate my birthday. We don't go out for dinner. We don't do anything. I, my kids will try to say hello and tell me that they love me, but uh, I'm divorced now, so I, it's not like I got a special partner that's running up to me. But other than that, I don't celebrate my stuff. I don't care to. I haven't in years, actually. Okay. It's all right. We're all entitled to our own opinions, and we just live our lives the way we want to live our lives. Sorry, man. I didn't. I know it's a weird thing. Even my grandma, she'll send me a weird message. She goes, I know you don't want anything for your birthday or blah, 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 but happy birthday. 
and I get those messages from her. So it's just That's... just something I've been like for my for many years. So sorry. <laughs> it's alright. I I have no problem with it. It's just again we we let, we we have every we have every right to live our lives the way we want to live our lives. Thanks, man. Thanks. <laughs> Welcome. Would you rather be transported 500 years into the future or 500 years into the past? Where we stand in time, I don't know which is worse. Honestly, our, with, with AI and the way we're at, dude, we could have the Terminator freaking kind of lifestyle hit our life and Skynet could be taking over in the next 50 years. So the, we might not even have another century here. Or 500 years ago, we weren't really in a great, I don't know, 500 years ago, the Roman times. Depends. Who do I get to be? <laughs> if I get to choose the type of person that I am, probably in the past, because then I get to be a deity or I'd be somebody high up in the Roman Empire or something or the Greeks. And so I live a le very lavish lifestyle and to be very fruitful and I'd enjoy my life and live a good 70 to 80 years because, yeah, I don't even know if the. As long as I got to choose who I got to be. But uh, I don't even know if the future is going to have that. Yeah, of course. Plus, it was simpler times. I don't know if I'm a fan of technology, honestly. And especially with all these psychology books that I read now. I've been reading Jonathan Hyatt, The Anxious Generation. I've been reading uh, Gene Twangy, iGen. And these are all social psychologists that have written these books that talk about how the the computers and phones and it's just damaging it's literally damaging the neur neurons if they're on their phones for more than two hours per day and because of the way that their mind is overworking and overstimulating plus it's taking away from cognitive development which is crucial to the development of humans period in general and so they're actually talking about how these tv screens and these computer screens give you a false sense of reality like because you're feel like you're connected to everybody but you're really not you remember that feeling of love that we talked about you get that burning mm -hmm. that you get when you're close to your family that's very crucial in your friendships too and you lose that even though you think you have 15 million friends they're all online you really don't have anybody that you're connected to and they talk about this they talk about people that are depressed when they have all these friends and they're celebrities but they don't really have anybody close to them there's a reason for that and now they have studies to prove this kind of stuff and how it's literally taking away from who we are and so Honestly, when I read these stuff, I don't think kids should have phones until they're 18. I really don't. That's just the way of society nowadays. You need to, um, once they're 18, we can slowly work it in and they can, they can learn to gain it. I mean, even look at social media. If I told you that I was going to give your kids something that constantly punched them in the face, would you give it to them? No, you wouldn't. Because look, dude, this is what social media does. They hop on and they're either... 90, they've proven that most of the time that they're depressed when they, when they look because they're either missing out on something or they're worried about the way their body looks or their friend said something mean about them or nobody's liking their pictures or who knows, dude. And they're all negative incantations, negative. So every single time your son or daughter picks up her phone, she's getting punched in the face by the social media and unknowingly, not even on purpose. It's not like we're purposely going, ha, 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 we got you. It's unknowingly, she's just, oh, oh. And so she's just constantly negative on herself. Negative, 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 negative. And it's, of course, it's created the depressed generation. It's crazy what we have done to people and what we've done to these kids. And this is in their critical month development time. So they're developing in the best that they possibly can be. And they're, they're getting knocked down 24 seven. And then these wires are getting crossed and things are getting distorted. And uh, dude, we're just, we're literally doing the most damage that we've ever done without even knowing it and so honestly i'm not a huge fan of technology so you want to put me in a position that i could take that out i probably would yeah there's gotta there's gonna be something done about the technology but of course no one's gonna do anything about that because if these uh, technologies they, they don't if they don't make any monetary revenue of course they're not gonna do with that right and of course it's gonna get worse it's gonna way worse oh yeah yeah no nobody's gonna stop it because it's what brings in the money, but it is literally destroying everybody right now. Oh yes, absolutely. If you could watch one movie again for the first time, what movie would that be? My favorite movie, Couples Retreat. I love that movie. It's, it's wholesome. It's about couples coming together. It's about good values. It's on a beach. It's funny. 
It's got good people. It's one of it's my it's my favorite movie, Couples Retreat. Hands down, has been forever since the first time I've ever saw it, and will always be. Fantastic. What was the last book you've read? Oh, I think the anxious anxious generation. Can I just finish that one? Yeah, because I'm working on the Bible right now. Um, I started Atomic Habits again, but I've read that already. But uh, I'm uh, I'm working on Atomic Habits with James Cleary, and I'm working on, or I just finished The Anxious Generation by Jonathan Hyatt. Hmm. All right, then. Would you sleep on the wall or sleep on the ceiling? Hmm. What's the, what's the reasoning behind that? <laughs> just for fun? Yeah, it's just it's something that pops in my head. Okay. Uh, I don't know, man. I mean, I guess if we could defy gravity and see what it would feel like, it would be kind of fun to sit up on the ceiling because you know what it's like to stand up all day so that's not really going to do you any good just standing against the wall trying to fall asleep so i'll take the ceiling yeah i'd say the ceiling too because you have all the floor space to yourself and anything to do yeah that's true too if you if you were given 500 acres of land what will you use that land for oh man i'm already trying to do that this is the goal okay first we need to help millions of people by getting in front of them and sharing our message so that we can help people come out of their own struggles but once we do that and i can put myself in the position that i need to and you give me some land like that i want to move out to the country i do i really do um once my kids get a little bit older and stuff i'd honestly at home i'd take my kids out there at home school and we'd we'd homestead i would grow my own food i would plow my own land i'd have livestock i'd uh i'd wake up and i'd just I do the things that we were built to do to survive. I mean, I believe living inside the city can kind of become a rat race, you know, and half the stuff you're doing is not even beneficial to you. And you don't even know why you're doing it. You're just like, "Uh, I got to keep up with the rest of the world. It's like crazy. But if you took the time and you actually took a step back, I want to slow down in life. I know everybody wants to more, 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 more. I would love to take a step back. So 500 acres in the middle of nowhere, (laughs) You're speaking my dream right now, man. Build my house. I build a pool out there. I build the sauna out there. I build nice little things that we could enjoy. The daily stuff that we, or I guess not daily, but the the advanced technologies that we do have that are good. Like if I built my own sauna and pool and stuff like that that I could do. But um, yeah, have everything that you could possibly need, and just live off the land. That's what I would do. I would honestly I would I would try to become self-sufficient as possible there's no reason to depend on anybody or anything and that's you know that's how we used to be it's so crazy to me nowadays that people wouldn't know what to do if everything shut down but you know 50 years ago our grandparents at least here in America were pioneers 50 years ago you had old people or 100 years ago you had people like Joseph Smith and stuff like that coming through the pioneers that were just hiking across and pitching tents here in Utah I'm just gonna I'm just going to camp out here. It's more like a couple hundred years ago, so I guess I should be more realistic if we're going to talk about this on air. But not long ago, compared to your guys' history over there in the United Kingdom and and what you guys have, thousands and thousands of years of generation, you've got homes that are four or five hundred years old. But we here, just a few hundred years like that, people were living off the land. We didn't ask anybody. We had malaria and we straight had a wooden cart. We just hiked across the country. Yep, here we go. (laughs) people you try to get a kid to do that nowadays he'd freak out and that's what i would love. i'd want to teach my kids how to do that i want to teach them how to live off the land be that type of person understand what it's like to just live for yourself and and not have to depend on everything in the way the world is because i don't know i just i get that we have to grow and there's going to be cities and then we're going to and life's got to build but and I, I feel like we can still hold on to some of those older values Yes, absolutely. And that is all we have for this episode. It was great having you on, Dustin, talking about your book. And, and of course, uh, this conversation that we just had, it's been in very insightful. It's been fabulous. Thank you. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah, and Surviving Life, Mugged in Mexico. Please go check out the book. Uh, you can get it on Amazon or you can go to Dustin Jackson, Dustin with an A, D-U-S-T-A-N, Jackson, J-A-C-K-S-O-N. So thank you. You're welcome. And until next time, stay tuned for more.